Some lessons take longer to learn than others, but I think what I've, one thing I've learned is it's better to focus on doing a small number of things well than trying to jam a whole bunch of things into your day or your week. And I think that's important for relationships. And uh, I don't believe in multitasking. I believe multitasking means you're screwing up multiple things at the same time, as opposed to doing a good job on a few things. Um, I try to, one of my rules, I think, is to, um, when, when you focus on doing a few things, uh, it leaves you a little bit more openness, you know, so if you get distracted, you come back to one of those few things. Um, I believe that you should go through your day, your life with an open mind, an open heart, and uh, wonderful things happen, right? And so you could take that little bit of a diversion as to what comes up, and then once you've explored that, come back to those that small list of priorities. I went through a time in my life where my kids were the most important thing, right? So I had a uh, you know, so I've now got a 24-year-old and a 29-year-old, and I see the 29-year-old now parenting a one-year-old, and I think that, you, you know, I, I said in a Facebook post when one of them posted something, you, you know, you must, when I look and see how you guys turned out, I must have got something right over the years. And um, I, I think that's important. My father always when, had this picture we gave my parents for their 50th wedding anniversary of I have a brother and two sisters and between us we have seven grandkids and uh, you know when someone would ask my father later in life what he was most proud of it was that picture he pointed to and uh, when you're a parent your most important job is raising good citizens and uh, I've got two now that are pretty well launched and uh, yeah well, people that know me from, from my work experience and would know that one of the things that, that I guess I learned over time and, and helps me focus in my life is, is structure. Um, I like to, I, I guess I would call myself a linear thinker in that I like to have order. And by developing kind of systems for living in the sense of, of structure and structure in my day and in, in my life, that seems to allow me to be able to function more comfortably. Um, it provides order, and then I can build on that order. Um, you know, it's, it, when, you're, when you work in a school, you're, you're, you become conditioned to bells, and, and your day starts when the yellow buses arrive and so on, but that translates also into your, into your way of living, so that you, you know, you, there, are different, there are things that you tend to do in an order in your day. Um, not that it's rigid, because I can, I certainly can be flexible, but, but it allows me to have a pattern of life that, that gives you um, strength and you can build on that. Being involved. I think uh, just because you're a senior and, and most of the seniors when you get in retirement ages is keep involved and things that lessons you learned in life is try to get some of that back to some of the new generations coming up. And, and make sure that if we, the more we do now for seniors, the child that's being born today, they're gonna to be able to benefit when they retire. It's being active, being active in body. Uh, I do Tai Chi, I do Pilates, I do line dancing, and I walk every morning. I do about 5K and I know that's what keeps me well. And as far as the mind goes, I'm involved in several things in the community. I'm active in the Stepping Stone Senior Center, and I'm on the Age Friendly Committee. I'm on the Police Senior Advisory Committee. It's keeping going, because I believe when you stop, so does the body. And uh, as part of uh, recuperation following uh, cancer and uh, chemotherapy. Two years ago, I was part of uh, running after cancer at uh, UMB, and that proved it to me so much more. I was the eldest in, in the group, and uh, they kept saying, oh, well, you, you inspire us, and they didn't realize how much they inspired me. Because I, being the eldest, I thought how fortunate I was that I got to be 79 before cancer hit me, 
where they were much younger and one had been pregnant at the time. And uh, so, uh, yeah, every day for me is an additional day to keep going, to keep doing, to at least maintain a level of activity that I have right now, both uh, body and mind, as I said in the very beginning. The answer I would give to that is uh, I'm a lifelong artist. And so uh, in, in my arts, I, I cover uh, different mediums. So I'm into wood, soapstone, painting, wood turning, uh, screen print, so on, and a few other things. And so with that, I, I never get bored. I'm always too busy. And, but it's my therapy. It uh, makes the world disappear. Time goes away, you forget to eat, uh, and you spend long hours, sometimes into the night. And uh, so uh, that for me has given me that, that boost of, of continuing. And then uh, as well, uh, it gives me a lot of networking as well, uh, meeting lots of people and uh, lots of exposures. Most of my work uh, has gone out of country. Uh, so I'm getting that local exposure in the last couple of years. And, uh, I, I can't say any more than uh, it's, it really puts a smile on your face. That would be volunteering. I'm a volunteer board member for Kidney Cancer Canada. Uh, we're a national virtual uh, health care uh, organization uh, that uh, our mandate is to uh, inform and educate patients and caregivers, advocate for, for drug access, equal drug access, and also um, we uh, fund research um, and we we travel we travel with uh, for patient meetings that patients and caregivers can come get more information and can also network with people who are going through the same health issues as they are and I would say that is what uh, that is what grounds me it fulfills me uh, it keeps me very busy. Uh, it's working with people that need help. I love for my wife. When I first saw her, I knew she was the one 46 years ago. And that's sustained me since then. And the love that she's shown me uh, is just as simple as that. It keeps me going. Love for my wife and her love for me and the years that we've spent together uh, have just been wonderful. We've gone through some rough times and a lot of good times. Uh, it, it averages out on the positive side. Uh, I'm there for her when she needs it and she's done it for me over the years. We both had bouts of illness, so that's what keeps me going. Helping people. And I, I guess when I was in LPN, I used to uh, try to help as many as I could and make them feel good about themselves. I used, I used to enjoy being with the seniors and really uh, help them. And what I see in them, what they see in me, you know, it, it made me feel good. I, I, I could feel myself in them, you know, when I helped them. And when I, when I walked in the room and there was a smile, I knew that they, made, that they were glad that I was there. And, and then they opened up to me and, you know, and talked with me and I knew that, that I, that I, that I was with them, you know. I just loved it in a way. And my mother used to say, remember, you think of us when you're with them. Were, you, were your parents treat them like you would want them to be treated? My connection with nature and my spirituality. Um, I smudge when necessary, okay? 
I use the sacred medicines, the cedar, the tobacco, the sage, the sweet grass, and copal. And, and if I need to, I will hug a tree too. And, and I have my quiet times. And I read the Bible to my elder on a daily basis. And that's in the resting reading, let me tell you. <laughs> Some of those names and, and sometimes when I'm reading a passage, of, you know, like, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. You know, it's about respect. You treat others with respect and they're gonna treat you with respect. And I don't need a church. I don't need a man-made structure. The universe is my place of worship. What makes me well? That's that's a very interesting question. I stop. Um, it, it's it's not something that I do religiously, but I try to be intentional about what I do and uh, to be in the moment, in the present moment. So living intentionally, stopping moments in my life to breathe and to be aware of my breath, and um, that that gives me that inner strength when when something is going right, when something is going wrong, to not panic. Well, one thing that contributes to my sense of wellness uh, is sparked by being here today, um, to see all of these uh, innovations and uh, programs and so forth that have evolved, uh, in particular since a couple of uh, uh, years ago when we had an event called A Day for the Ages. And I think of this event today as a little bit of a follow-up to that. Um, I'm particularly interested in the, the narrative corner, as some of us are calling it, because um, I teach at uh, uh, St. Thomas University, and um, we're very interested in, our, uh, in, in the power of stories to help people uh, feel better about themselves, basically, and to see um, so many people milling about today and checking out the power of story at the narrative corner uh, uh, reaffirms for me that that what I've been passionate about and written about and done workshops on and taught about for the last 20, 30 years actually has a hearing. And uh, when I think about the wellness uh, movement uh, and uh, Tim Snow and company and how they're getting so excited about narrative friendly communities, that makes me feel personally good. And it makes me feel personally good because um, uh, the psychologist Eric Erickson had this concept of generativity and that we need, uh, as we get older, to feel that we're making a difference in the wider world and contributing in some way to, to the community, either through having children and raising children or through doing things or writing books or whatever that, that make a positive difference in the world. And I get a real strong hit of that today. I didn't sleep very much last night in anticipation of today, but I'm getting energy from the, the wonderful people here milling about uh, and uh, the, the uh, seeing evidence of all these wonderful innovations that have taken place since a couple of years ago when we had a day for the ages. I exercise every day. I bicycle, I walk, I kayak. I. Um, in walking and in kayaking, I certainly connect, connect with nature. Trees are important to me. I get a, sort of a vibration, a feeling, a spirit, just being in the life I feel uh, with the trees. Let's see, uh, what else do I do that's possible? Oh, I take a journey. I may, I, I, I write my journal every morning. First thing I do, uh, well, right after breakfast, I admit, uh, I will write in my journal, oh, two or three pages. I've done it for over 20 years. No, I'll take that back. I've done it for about 18 years now. And I, um, 
I go back and read old journals as well. And, uh, well, I don't miss a day. And as long as I've done all that, I go back and read about my life way back when. I mean, it, uh, and it's reflective. And I'd say it's, uh, well, self-informing for sure. Like uh, right now, I'm reading one, oh, my journal from 2002. And, uh, oh, there's a book I read back then and I rechecked it out of the library and I'm, I'll finish it today. I mean, it's, it's worth rereading, yeah. So anyway, that's, uh, those are the three things that I do that are uh, important to me and positive. I lost my dad when I was four years old, tragically. He was in a car accident, was killed. I was sharing this earlier, but uh, ever since that time, I've suffered from terrible anxiety. Uh, I, I go back sometimes in my head to those, that day of chaos, and it's just, it's, so what I've had to do over the course of my life, particularly over the last 10 to 12 years, is I've made a choice. Now, in any situation where I'm confronted with anxiety or frustration or fear, heavy on the fear. I just stop, I take 15, 20 seconds, and I ask myself, what do I want to happen here? I take control of the situation. I, I bring myself out of my fear place, and I just confront it and say, what do I need to do to, to make the kind of, find the solution that I want? And that's probably the biggest thing, because I don't know whether, you guys have any experience with, with anxiety, but it's a terrible thing. You, you get all knocked off track. So that's the biggest thing for me, learning how to deal with my anxiety.